welcome back in this series this is the second lecture which is going to talk about the odontogenic cysts in the last presentation you saw that the cysts can be basically divided as developmental and inflammatory based on the cell of origin it can be either odontogenic or non odontogenic cysts which are derived from the inclusions of the facial processes based upon the stimulus you have inflammatory odontogenic cysts and developmental odontogenic cysts both can originate from either cell rest of malasis cell rest of serrae or reduced enamel epithelia we are discussing the cysts originating from reduced enamel epithelium and in the last lecture we spoke about the dentigerous cyst the dentigerous cyst is an intraosseous cyst and the soft tissue counterpart of the dentigerous cyst is called as the eruption cyst as the tooth erupts it may have a cyst around it which can pop out like a small bubble over the gingiva hence it is called as eruption hematoma also because it gives rise to a bluish discoloration of the gingival tissue during eruption so let's have a look at this animation which shows us how the dental follicle is present covering the tooth so in this you can make out that the tooth is covered by a small dental follicle which is nothing but reduced enamel epithelium the inner enamel epithelium and the outer enamel epithelium if this particular tooth is present within the alveolar bone the desmolytic property of the reduced enamel epithelium acts around the tooth and it gives rise to eruption of the tooth but when this particular follicle grows and gives rise to a cyst formation we call it as the dentigerous cyst now let us assume that the dentigerous cyst is not formed and because of the desmolytic activity the tooth starts to erupt and as it erupts it comes out of the bone the gingival tissue comes in close contact with that of the reduced enamel epithelium as it contacts with the reduced enamel epithelium it fuses to form a epithelial conglomerate at this particular site if the cyst develops and it enlarges it gives rise to an eruption cyst which is nothing but a dentigerous cyst but occurring in a soft tissue so how does it look like it looks like a small hematoma around the site of eruption usually seen at the same age when the eruption is supposed to occur you will have a bluish discoloration which is because of the congestion of the vascularity in that particular site radiologically you will not find any lesion because there is no bone involvement it is a predominantly a soft tissue lesion but still you can make out some radiolucent halo around the tooth that is happening what do you see histologically histologically it is very similar to that of a dentigerous cyst you will see a thin reduced enamel epithelium which is accounted for by the outer enamel and the inner enamel epithelium with a large cystic cavity and you may also find uh, gingival tissue and the reduced enamel epithelium separated by a small connective tissue capsule or may also form a fusion somewhere so in the next class we will talk about an aggressive odontogenic cyst which is also known as the keratocystic odontogenic tumor earlier it was called as the odontogenic keratosis but there are two schools of thought which say that because of the aggressive nature we can call it as a tumor and we will talk about this particular cyst in a tomorrow's class